Hi friends, welcome to episode number 6 of our Master Planning Level 1 series. In this episode, we will discuss in detail about the concept of action messages in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation. With that note, let's quickly jump into today's topic. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel D365 Talks or follow my profile in LinkedIn. So let's quickly get into today's topic of actions in master planning. So we'll quickly view the agenda and uh, already we covered the, the previous episode regarding time fences. Make sure that you watch the episodes in the order so that you get to full benefit of the whatever the master planning level one series we are doing right now. So first of all, what is actions? Uh, what is this configuration is all about? So in case of when we are generating the planned orders, let's say we are running the master planning today on January 1st. And uh, so the master planning was run by the planner and uh, we, the planner decided to form such in certain purchase orders on maybe January 2nd or 3rd. And then uh, the planned purchase orders are created and they are also firmed, right? And uh, in those cases, let's say imagine on January 5th, you are about to get a change in the sales order requirement, which may be a change in the ship date or in the quantity. And because of this change, which actually happened on Jan 5th, but you actually ran the master planning on Jan 1st. This change has to be incorporated in the whatever the planned purchase orders which got generated or firmed, right? So that those changes also accommodated in as part of your master planning. So actions are a fantastic way in order to accommodate those changes which the, which are happened due to the modifications in the ship date or quantity so that if the, those changes can move upstream in order to fulfill the orders which are which are happening on the downstream right so the action messages suggest ways that you can avoid unwanted situations and ways to change existing purchase orders and production orders so this is specific to both production orders and the purchase orders so primarily these actions will not help you in terms of managing your planned transfer orders but uh, in terms of changing the existing production orders or purchase orders, you will be able to make those impact. It is a system generated suggestion to change an existing planned, approved or firmed order. So in case of planned order generation, it goes under various stages. So we will also cover that as we take into the section of uh, master plan and how the planned orders are generated. We will cover in detail about that. Um, so once the planned orders are getting into these stages, you will still be able to incorporate those changes. And the action messages, action messages are generated by the master planning calculation in response to change requirements. So like I said, it, these changes may be with respect to either ship date in the sales order or with respect to the quantity. And uh, if these sales, if these changes need to be incorporated, where it need to be incorporated, when it need to be incorporated, is that something which we need to decide as a planner. But uh, whether whatever the changes have been made, we it's say actions is the best way to notify the planner that these are the changes which have been done with respect to ship date or quantity. So you just better go and revisit the planned orders which were generated earlier. So that's the whole idea for using actions in Dynamics 365 master planning. Right. Um, so let's quickly get into the system before getting into the other concepts. Uh, let me go to Dynamics 365 screen where exactly these actions are configured. That is something which we should be aware of. If you go to um, master planning, and our setup the coverage group um, so this is where you need to configure the um, actions so let me click on edit so each and every coverage group already we discussed about the concepts under general and also under the other four step uh, so we also discussed about time fence now we are discussing about the action messages so for example if this is the coverage group which you are going to assign to a specific item then make sure that you enable the action message which is the first step which you are supposed to do if you want the actions to be triggered if there are any changes which are happening in the requirement and uh, how how far down the line in the future you want the master planning to consider these actions provide an appropriate number of days this is a number of days similar to like the way we have configured for coverage time fence or for the other time fences this is typically in days and uh, the best practice is to provide the equal number of days what we are configuring for coverage time fence should be similar to the action time fence also. Um, so and then we have other parameters over here like advance uh, action, postpone action, decrease, increase, derived action. These are something which we are going to look into. But these are primarily done based on two dates. One is the requirement date. The requirement date primarily in case of sales orders is the ship date. 
so not not necessarily just the sales order but even if you look at the production order the production orders is also considered in terms of uh, triggering these actions so the either you can use a requirement date or you can also use a delay date we will talk about what is delay and delay date in probably in the next episode but um, the requirement date is primarily with respect to the sales order ship date which will be taken as per us uh, calculating the actions and uh, processing the messages so so you are basically giving the um, the time which is required between your issue transaction issue maybe your sales order transactions or basically the issue transactions and the receipt transactions which is basically your purchase order receipts or production order once it is completed your fg is getting into the system which is also basically a receipt tra transaction so that's where the how for you want to provide how you want to provide a um, provide action based on this receipt and is issued transactions and that's that is something which you need to configure um i know this might sound confusing but uh, let's quickly get into the concept so that you can understand very well on what exactly this is all about um so first concept which we want to see is the advanced margin which primarily means if this is selected master planning can suggest that existing planned orders uh, let me move the video a bit higher uh, that existing planned orders be advanced in time so if you want the planned orders to be advanced in time because of various reasons you the customer is asking for an earlier delivery or uh, maybe you find some challenges in terms of transporting the material the transportation lead time is higher so in those cases if you want to uh, kind of advance the uh, delivery of the material issue of materials in those cases you need to provide a coverage group with advance margin in advance margin field you can specify the maximum number of days this is very very important we are we are providing the maximum number of days that can pass between your receipt and an issue transaction so this is typically configured where you want to avoid any stockout situations or you want to avoid the loss of sales typically the example which we are discussing here is let's say um, the actual ship date is on 14th of january right so you have the master planning was run and it has generated the actual receipt date on 13th of january but uh, for some reasons there was a change in the uh, ship, ship date which is kind of advanced to an earlier date like 11th of january so you have an requirement to be fulfilled on 11th of january so the master planning will trigger if you have provided a, a advanced margin of three days then the master planning is going to send out an action message saying that hey this order need to be advanced because there is a change in the uh, shipment date so that the advanced receipt has to happen on 10th of january so that uh, we are getting into a situation not uh, reducing the loss of sales but at the same time we will avoid the stock situations for fulfilling the fulfilling the uh, customer order right so so that's why you need to take an appropriate call whether you want to be, because some cases it doesn't make sense really to deliver this material because of various reasons whether you have the raw material or not or whether the you have the capacity to deliver the material on 11 so on various reasons if you decide to go ahead or if you not decide to go ahead then the, as a planner you can decide on that accordingly but system is generally throwing a message to you hey you need to advance your order because of a change in the requirement right so this is a classic example for advancing the receipt right so how do we configure in the system let me go back to the system so here you can see that we need to enable the advanced toggle to yes and also you need to provide an advanced margin so that the orders can be advanced so the next logic is exactly opposite to this uh, you in case if you want to postpone the um, orders so you need to enable postpone and then provide a postpone margin so if you're trying to postpone uh, let's me give you a quick example on this this also works in the similar logic let's say uh, let's not let's forget about the definition what i've written here feel free to pause the video and read the definition if you want but um, if the if you have configured the postpone margin if you have en enabled that and you, you also provided the maximum number of days to consider let's say you have given a maximum number of margin days as five days and you have an actual receipt that is actually planned on 10th because you want to ship a material to the customer on 11th of january and for some reasons customer is expecting uh, or uh, is willing to take the material only on 15th of january and is not willing to take the material on 11th of january so for some reasons he has changed the shipment date requested shipment date to 15th of january right so it doesn't make sense for you to onboard or 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 complete the product receipt for the required raw materials by 10th of january itself 
because uh, you will be unnecessarily holding that stock for the next five to six days right because your fulfillment is actually expected on 15th of january so if that is the case then still you want the master planning engine to suggest an action message to postpone the receipts in those cases the the master planning engine will postpone the receipt from the actual receipt date of 10 1 2025 to 14 1 2025 if we have given a postponed margin of five days so that you receive the material on time uh, a just in time kind of thing where you receive the material only when you actually want to fulfill the order not when when there is a huge delay because of the customer expectations so in by following this process you avoid excess inventory levels so unnecessarily for maybe if you have a postponed margin of maybe 5 to 10 days you don't hold the inventory for the 5 to 10 days and you will be able to receive the material only when it is actually required for your production or fulfilling your sales order requirement and it will also in a way help you to manage your cash flows because because it all depends on the vendor credit terms with whom you have negotiated and come up with the appropriate credit terms right so it will help you to manage your cash flows so it is also one of the important configuration as far as managing your planned purchase orders and production orders so this is about postponed margin and uh, the next important concept which i want to discuss is called the increase and decrease this is also something which is really important which you need to be aware of um, let me get back to the presentation uh, so what happens if we enable increase here we are not providing the maximum number of days or minimum number of days unlike the advanced margin or postponed margin but uh, in case of increase if you have enabled this toggle then to specify in the master planning that you can suggest the production order purchase orders and other receipt transactions be increased primarily what you notice the receipt transactions we are not talking about the issue transactions here it can be your purchase planned purchase orders or the production orders where these receipt transactions to be increased to prevent shortages in inventory so i i know this might sound a little confusing let's look at an example right over here so imagine that you under the default order settings you have given a minimum order quantity of zero for an item and the maximum order quantity is 90 and the order quantity should be in a multiple of 20 uh, pieces so on a on any day you got a sales order for a demand of 60 quantity of this item right so which is in the multiple of 20 and the master planning will create planned purchase orders for a quantity of 60 but uh, after some days if the demand is increased by 30 let's say the demand is increased to 90 now master planning will suggest an increase of 40 quantity instead of uh, instead of 20 so ideally if it is in multiple of 20 the the system will check what is the parameter we have enabled whether it is increase or decrease if it is increase if it is in increase still it will try to increase the requirement based on the multiples and still try to fulfill the requirement even though we will have the risk of holding 10 quantity in excess because for initially our requirement was 60 then it is now increased to 90 and even though it meets our maximum order quantity of 90 the multiply can be in only in 20 in terms of 20 right so instead of increasing it to 80 it will still system try to increase it to 100 quantity and make sure that the quant make sure that the order for 90 is fulfilled to the customer so if that's the kind of scenario you want to have in your supply chain then you need to enable increase in the uh, coverage group the same works because this case is ideally used to avoid stock out situation because um, you do not want to end up in a situation where you have a loss of sales and uh, if that is your business requirement still holding a risk of having the excess inventory then you need to enable the toggle of increase So the next concept is decrease where it is exactly the opposite of what we discussed in terms of increase um, so here the master planning tries to increase the quantity to the next highest number in terms of what are the multiples we have but in this case the master planning will try to reduce it to a next lowest number even though we are unable to fulfill the actual change in the demand cost in the sales order right for example if there is a demand for a quantity of 60 for an item similar case what we have discussed before but in this case the master planning will generate a plan a purchase order for 60 quantity but if that for some reason the customer is now bringing the demand from 60 to 50 but still the master planning since the multiply is in terms of 20 master planning will suggest a decrease of 20 quantity which brings the overall planned purchase order quantity to 40 
because it will risk it will kind of getting into the logic where it will applies only in terms of only in the multiples of 20 so that um, the excess 10 quantity of stock we will not be holding the system because if it goes for the next higher number which is 60 uh, we will be fulfilling the order for 50 quantity but uh, we will be holding the additional 10 quantity in the system so if you do not want to get into the risk of holding additional inventory in the stock then this is the best way because in case of high value items right or or maybe the seasonal kind of um, items which you typically if in case if you are typically handling in those cases you will never be interested in terms of holding additional inventory or excess inventory you just want to fulfill based on the customer demands or you that it's better to get into the loss of sales if those kind of business scenarios you have it is always better to configure this decrease in the coverage group so that you always ensure that the multiples are met and at the same time of course you are not getting into the risk of holding excess inventory at any point in time so that is about decrease and uh, next important concept is derived actions and uh, let me tell you uh, so this this is also one of the important option which is available under actions so if you use derived actions this is primarily used for the component items in the bomb probably we will discuss about this in detail when we get into the planned production order series so how do you want to kind of generate the actions for the comp for the component items in the bomb so that any changes at the component level can be informed to the planners in order to modify the changes for the upstream orders like your planned purchase orders or the production orders so that is about the derived actions for the bomb but uh, for both increase and decrease i hope i was not confusing you but um, but you also need to understand where you need to configure the minimum order settings let me go to the system and i will quickly tell you um, so in case of because if you have not configured the default order settings you will not be able to use even though you have enabled the increase or decrease it doesn't make sense for the system because the system has to know from where it has to pick the uh, minimum order quantity and the multiply of the order quantity so if you are having if you are in any item number go to plan on the action pane on the top and uh, you have the default order settings so in the default order settings uh, click on edit and then you need to provide the appropriate multiply multiple of the purchase quantity and uh, even if you have want to control the transfers it will be primarily taken from the inventory quantity or even the production will be taken based on the inventory quantity and also you have the multiple and the minimum order quantity which can be given in the sales order but uh, if your default order type for for example this particular item 1000 which is a surface pro la laptop for which the default ordering type is always purchase order then you make sure that you provide the appropriate multiple over here so that in in our example like like we discussed if it is 20 always in multiples of 20 the orders will be generated we also discussed about this in our one of the previous episodes in the procurement and sourcing make sure that you also watch if you want to get in detail about how this quantity is actually reflect in case of purchase orders but um, system actually you if you want to configure increase and decrease you need to make sure that you have the configurations of this min, minimum order quantity max order quantity and also the multiple which is primarily considered by the system whenever this increase or decrease of quantity is done by the master planning engine so with that we are coming to end of this episode so make sure that you subscribe to the channel dthrist talks or follow my profile in linkedin and in the next episode we will be quickly understanding about the concept of delays in master planning see you soon in the next episode